Hold down, man. Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it. Next time I see you, you gon' leave airless. Hey, welcome back to another episode of K Frog TV. I appreciate y'all rocking with me, man. Y'all go ahead, hit that like, subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. For any people who ain't receiving no notifications or are only receiving some notifications, YouTube placed a lot of people's bell on personalized. Make sure you go there and you put it on all. Instead of personalized, therefore you can receive all notifications. Because out of my 40 something K subscribers, only a couple thousand are receiving notifications. All right. I'm doing the best I can to pick my channel back up. You feel me? But you know, YouTube be playing some games sometimes, so there ain't really nothing I could do about it. But you can also find me on K Frog Gaming. If y'all ever want to tune into that, I'd be live streaming on there on a daily 12 o'clock at night, maybe 10 o'clock at night. And then y'all could check me out there. That's where you can catch me at. All right, so here on this video here, I'm going to be breaking it down to y'all about an inmate that I was locked up with that to me was the most vicious bandit that I've ever came across in the state of Florida prison. Now, this right here be the type of videos, you know, that they don't want out there. You know what I'm saying? That they don't really, you know, want people to know things about or whatever. But, you know, that's what happens. When you keep it real, you know, bad things seem to happen to you. You know, uh, they'll try to get you out the way as much as you want. You know, like you'll be you'll be putting you'll be exposing, exposing, exposing corruption, whatever it is you get rid of. And then some way, somehow people will, uh, you know, do the best they can to try to get you out the way. All right. Even if you're a threat to a different YouTube channel as well. You know, um, I found out that, you know, um, certain channels that don't like you and stuff like that, they'll constantly be spamming your name, you know, in order so that way. You know, the YouTube will strike it as a spam comment and your channel's named after your name. It'll be hard for, you know, your videos. Certain things will be hidden. Okay. Anyways, check it out. So this this inmate that I'm speaking on, he was at Charlotte CI with me, all right? His name was Bobo, all right? Bobo wasn't just a bandit. He was more of a, he, he, he got what he wanted when it came to certain people, you feel me? And he loved them white boys. You feel me? White boys who wanted to stick up for themselves, who didn't know no better, you know. And the crazy thing about it all is Bobo was respected by all different gangs. You feel me? Like, he getting altercations and it didn't matter if there was a gang member or not. I remember three, four different incidents that happened at Charlotte CI that he was involved against gang members. He had two life sentences and was already in there like 17, 18 years or something like that. And that was at the time. So now, since I've been out, he done been in there 20 years. You feel me? And what he would do is, he didn't give a damn who he got into it with. It can turn into a fight. It can turn into a knife situation. He's been stabbed a bunch of different times. The whole compound knew about him, knew who he was. And it was all just on whose trail he was on. All right? You get some young white dudes that would come into prison or whatever and they didn't, you know, know how to defend themselves or they didn't know no better or whatnot. And he would like act like he was friendly with them. You know, he'd he'd protect them. Any incident they get into, you know, he would make sure he gets involved. You know, like a new white boy could come in the dorm or he can or Bobo can go to confinement and get moved into another dorm. First thing he's doing is he's is he's looking for a different white boy. And then he'd get, and then when he, when he, when he, when he would pull him, he'd be like cool with him. You know, he would defend him against different people, act like he wanted to harm him, act like he was there for him, you know, try to buddy him and everything. And then he would just turn on him like that. Next thing you know, he don't let them leave the dorm. He tells them what they're eating for dinner, where they're going. And it became kind of like a, they were stuck in a bubble with him. No matter where they went on the compound, he'd come. He'd get put in confinement. He's walking back there to confinement to see him. And he would just mentally take over their mind. And he would make it to where they felt trapped and there was nothing that they could do. You know what I'm saying? Now, I remember a situation one time where my dorm was at Chow. While we was at Chow this one particular day, next thing you know... um. A white boy that was there, whatever, that everyone already knew. Yeah, he, you know, that's who Bobo fucked with. Bobo be on that boy's trail. So the white boy, whatever, got in an argument with one of the kitchen uh, workers. And then the person that, uh, the one that wipes the tables when you're inside the chow hall, there will be an inmate with an apron and a little uh, hair net and gloves and a rag. 
and they wash the tables as you know each each table leaves they wash the tables well the white boy ended up getting in an argument with the kitchen worker so the kitchen worker shoved the white boy next thing you know the white boy left or whatever everyone knew bobo's gonna come up here to the chow hall so the table i was at me and my homeboys and the table next to us four to a table so there was eight of us we're sitting there like boy bobo finna come up here and whoop his ass now like we're laughing about it or whatever and then he, the white the, the, the dude who pushed the white boy was like man you can go get whoever you want i don't care i don't see none of that sure enough who comes in bobo bobo didn't give a damn about the officers or none of that shit. He literally ran up to the dude with a tray. He grabbed the tray. Like when he walked in, he came in, walked right by where you get your tray at, went uh, where you dump your tray at, the, the slot that you put it in to go into the dish room. And he grabbed another empty tray and went up to the dude that was wiping the tables and just smacked him across the head with the tray. Big old fight broke out right then and there. Bobo don't say nothing the whole time. He gets in handcuffs, goes to confinement. While he's in confinement, you could see throughout the next couple days or whatever, like the next couple weeks, you see the white boy walking to and from confinement. You know what I'm saying? Like you could tell, like he had him hooked. You feel me? So he had he had that white boy to where this is what it is. Bobo had had so many stab wounds from throughout the years of him being in prison. He had scars all on his face and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like everywhere he's went, you know, people would hear about him from somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I was at what's a call with him. I heard that he uh, such and such. Oh, I heard he did this. He wet a dude up over there. Oh, he smacked an officer in the face for trying his boy. Because in the Florida State Prison, when you have someone that is, um, that isn't, you know, straight, you know, they don't just say, oh, look at that faggot. No, they call them boys or boogers. Like a booger. That's what they say. Oh, look at that booger. Look at that boy. Because in prison, we're men. We're not boys. We're men. There's a difference between boys and men. So in prison, people be like, oh, look, there go that boy. Or people be like, oh, there go what's his name's boy. You know, that's the that's the word, the definition of what they use for someone who isn't straight. You know, they call him a booger or a boy. Those are the two things that you hear. You feel me? So he had this boy. And like I said, he was going back into from confinement or whatever to see Bobo or whatever. Well, I guess in the process... Of this whole situation, his boy ended up being transferred. You know, not because of the situation in the child hall or anything. He just happened to get transferred. That's the thing about prison. You never know when it's time to pack it up and roll. You feel me? So, after he got transferred or whatever, Bobo got out of confinement. When Bobo got out of confinement, guess what dorm he got put in? He got put in my dorm. When he came to my dorm, first thing he did is he took his shirt off. He went to walking around the dorm and shit like that. He had his whole back tattled and shit all sideways and shit. Like the person who did the tattoos on him, you know, like like if you were to get it like written across like this, that shit went up and then this one was like that. It was totally uneven and shit like that. Some people said his last camp, the person that tattled him up, he got transferred from there from about taking that dude's life over messing up his tattoo on his back. So anyways, I knew who Bobo was. You feel me? You could see him. He'd literally just go out to different white boys and be like, oh, what's, oh, 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 you not a, uh, oh, you good at cooking? Or whatever, no matter what it is they're doing. Like, they could be listening to the music. Oh, oh, you like music? And he would try to make his way in with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Different white boys. But the funny thing about it is Bobo respected me off rip. When he came in that dorm, you know, he was just, he, he never tried none of that shit with me. He never tried to come at me, no funny, nothing like that. And he, you know, but I'd literally watch him do it to different people, you know, and he was known for that. Some people would even send boys at him. Some people would be like, from different dorms, they'd be like, hey, Bobo. And you'd see Bobo meeting up with him in front of the chow hall. And then they'd tell him, oh, yeah, this new boy just got here or whatever. He in uh, G-Dorm or this new boy is in B-Dorm now. And he'd be like, yeah, you'll see Bobo walking over there. That's just how he was. And he would just find him a new one. Like he would ride to the fullest. Go to confinement and everything behind these boys. And you feel me? Like rock out about him and everything. To where he was dead ass in love. You feel me? But then when one gets transferred or whatever. He was so used to, you know, keeping him rolling. That he would just go for another one. Spot his other one. And I swear to God. 
not two days would go by after one of his boys got transferred or went to the confinement or whatever it may be, you would see Bobo with a whole nother white boy. And that's just what it was. This one situation in particular, I remember, this is where he ended up leaving our dorm. When we was in our dorm or whatever, you know, uh, it was it was head count. After head count, Bobo decided to leave and go to a different dorm. You know, he went over there to violate. When he went over there to violate, we already knew it because his boy came to the window of our dorm. You know, you could just walk up to the window without coming in. He was hollering at Bobo through the window out loud, letting him know, man, this dude in G-Dorm, blah, 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 or whatever. So he went to G-Dorm after they lifted count. He went and violated in G-Dorm. Well, supposedly while he was in G-Dorm, this whole incident made the whole compound like aware, you know, like everyone knew of this whole incident. Well, when he went to G-Dorm or whatever, he went to his boy's dorm, you know, it was butterfly wing. So you got G1, 2, 3, and 4. He went to his boy's wing. When he went to his boy's wing, the runaround, like the, the, how, the houseman, the one who cleans up the dorm and stuff, cleans the showers, the bathroom sweeps and mops, the whole quad and everything. I guess he was saying something to when Bobo went in there or whatever. He was saying something to Bobo, I guess, from some shit they did in the shower yesterday. Oh, it was stank, and I had to pick that up yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Y'all, you be coming in here with, and then seeing your boy, and y'all go in the shower and do whatever it is you do. You feel me? And I got to clean that shit up. So Bobo felt disrespected over that. But before Bobo even went there, I guess he was checking the boy about it. So the boy came to our dorm to the window and said it out loud in front of the whole dorm. All hundred of us heard it. You feel me? So next thing you know, you see the police running over there. All the police, like before our dorm even came out, you just see all the police running the G-Dorm. We're all like, bitch, Bobo done did something. Sure enough, he ended up getting into it with the house dude or whatever. He took off on the house and dude and uh, chased him with a knife around the top tier. He was chasing him in circles. The guy was running around and running down the stairs. Bobo was chasing him with a knife. In the meantime of that, his boy got in a fight with another boy. Two of the boys started fighting. And then that boy that... He, the other boy got in a fight with, ended up having his boy there, his man. Well, his man did some shit. And so Bobo got into it with the house man, the other boy, and that boy's boyfriend, all three of them. And when he got into it with all three of them or whatever, he ended up wetting one up. He wetted up the other guy that had a boy. You feel me? And then he went to confinement for it. When he went to confinement, his boy and the other boy wet each other up and they ended up going to confinement all wet up and patched up so he went in behind his you know his man you feel me like he wasn't playing about his man you know what i'm saying so that's just the type of shit that he would do he would get in the incidents and then the whole compound knew of him for it you know just like another time before i even knew who bobo was he was known at at the compound because something over a cell phone um, one of the gangs, the G's, they wanted to run down and, and rob this one, you know, this one boy. When they wanted to rob this boy for his phone, Bobo wasn't having that. So Bobo went to their dorm and he ran up and he wet one of their brothers. So then once he wet one of the brothers, he didn't get in trouble for it. But then after he wet him, the next couple of days, you see the G's trying to eat Bobo. Like they were like, you know, they'd run up to him, try to wet him. He'd pull his knife out and he was rocking out against the G's for like a week straight over these bo over this boy. And then after a while, you know, he got wet a couple times. You know, they tried to cut him with a razor. The razor was dull. You know, he just gotten so much shit to where eventually the G's were like, all right, that's it. Because he's, even though they're wetting him, he's not checking in. You know, he's not getting caught, cut and stabbed. He's going back to his dorm, patching himself up. And then tomorrow he's looking for their other brothers. You know, okay, I got wet by you. All right, say no more. Now tomorrow he's walking around looking for anyone who's affiliated with that gang and he's wetting them up. So really their gang was taking more of a loss than he was. He's one person, but he stabbed five, six, seven of them within one week. You know, he used to just get into so much different shit and there was nothing they could do about it. You know, he would walk in a dorm and a lot of these gangs would front him shit. You know, they didn't care that he was a bandit. You know, they didn't care that he, you know, he had a boy. He messed with boys. You know, that he would walk in there and, and the way he carried himself and walked in, they would literally front him shit. Whether it was cigarettes, tunchi, a, a cell phone, whatever it is, they would just front it to him because they didn't want no problems with him. 
They, they knew he was going to rock. They knew he was going to bring down whatever they had going on. They weren't in the place a day to, you know, start that. They weren't, they weren't trying to risk whatever it is they had going on just by beefing with Bobo, you know? And I've literally seen him in, in the chow hall. He would sit there in the chow hall, and when new people would come in and shit, he would scope them. And then when they get up and clean their tray, he'd get up and he'd walk and he'd make his ent his his introduction. Oh, what's oh you from all uh, da da da? Oh, I seen it. Where I know you from? That's what he'd say to random people. Like he and he didn't he didn't hide it. It's not like he hid that he was a bandit. The whole the whole compound knew he was a bandit. He'd be sitting there talking like this, straight hood, laughing with people, and then all of a sudden, someone walked by. He'd be like, he'd be like, hey, hey, hey girl, where you where you where I seen you from? Calling another boy a girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it was. Like, he's been in there so long that it done flipped his mind over to where he literally, you know, looks at the boys like a female. You know, calls them baby. And girl, you better get over here. Stop playing with me. You know, like it opens their mind up to where they literally think they're, you know, communicating and talking and, and, and flirting with a female. When he, we're in prison, these aren't females. Doesn't matter if they wear a damn, them, 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 them cups that, you know, they use in football and shit. One of those, it don't matter if they use one of those straps to hide their shit or anything. That's still a man that you're communicating with. But Bobo was just so out in the open about it that he didn't give a damn to where no one even, you know, like, gave a fuck that he did that. You know, they just, you know, don't get me wrong though, like, a lot of people wanted, you know, smoke after him. You know, he'd be over there smoking and shit. He'd be like, let me hit that cigarette. And then they'll be like, and then they'll be like, go ahead, bro, you can have that. You feel me? Because a lot, we used to laugh at the people that smoked with him. Like, there'd be some people that did smoke with him and we would laugh at him. You know what I'm saying? Like, boy, he just ate that boy's ass. And now you over here smoking with him, boy. So you smoke, you smoking, you smoking ass. You smoking, like, we used to be laughing and making fun of people on the side. Be like, boy, no, you ain't just get done smoking with Bobo, boy. And they'd be like, man, I'd be like, yeah, all right, boy, boy, was just over there eating that boy's ass over there and beat on him now. All right, you think it's a game, boy, oh, nasty ass, you ain't hitting my cigarette. You know, like, like, shit like that, but he just would dead ass, like, someone would go get in the shower, he'd go in there, and he'd go in there, and he'd get in the shower next to him, he'd just start talking to him. You know, he was, he was like a, he would try to finesse him and play buddy-buddy with him, and then once they trust him, He'd, he'd roll on him and turn into like a vicious, like, this is what it is. You ain't going there. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You ain't going over here. You ain't eating chow today. Fuck that. You ain't gaining no weight. You ain't eating that shit they giving a chow today. Ain't no bread. Ain't no eating no bread off your plate. Like, he'd be walking around. He'll, he'll be talking to someone. He'll go sit at the table with a person in the chow hall. He'll be talking to someone and go sit at the table with them and be talking to them and then get right up and walk right over there to where his boy's at and walk up and, and take his boy's bread and go sit down and eat it. Like, you know you ain't supposed to be eating this shit. Like, like that's how he was. You feel me? A lot of people don't know the truth of how it is in prison, you know? Don't get me wrong. It's not like everywhere you go, someone will try to take it or someone, you know, will tell you, you feel me, you either finna fuck or fight. You know, it does happen. Every camp you go to, you will see this type of things. You feel me? But it doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. You feel me? But it does go on. It does happen in every camp. And, it, and, 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 and people in there act like it's normal. They look at it like it is normal. You feel me? Those are the type of things that mess your mind up in prison. You feel me? And not just alone seeing all the violent shit that happens. That'll like fuck your mind up from seeing all this violent stuff 24-7. But it's actually seeing how something like that, that isn't normal, is act like it's normal in there. You know what I'm saying? People walk around the wreck yard and shit holding hands, laying on the damn wreck yard together with their shirts tucked like, 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 like that. How they tie it like they're on the beach tanning and shit. Big old dudes all tatted up. He the head of a gang. He's got a boy. He's got a boy. And he's the head of a gang. And then he's got... 20-something brothers that do what he says. You feel me? Like, it just, it, it it does happen, though. You feel me? And literally, no matter what dorm Bobo went into, he'd always go to confinement for something. He'd make it to where a boy comes back there and sees him. He would literally would rock out about anybody for him. You know what I'm saying? 
anybody that felt like there was an interest for him, he would rock out about him. He'd do whatever he had to do to protect that boy. You feel me? And it was just a common thing. He didn't care if it was an officer. He wasn't going to let an officer talk disrespectful to his boy. You feel me? He wasn't going to let another inmate do it either. He damn sure wasn't going to let another inmate do it. If he ain't allowing officers, there's no way he's allowing inmates. You feel me? And he done been in so many different situations. Like I said, I guess the situation about with the shower over there in the other dorm. Supposedly, whatever they were doing, um, I guess there was shit inside the shower. And the shit... They, they pushed it in the shower drain. Like a circle shower drain has a bunch of holes in it. They pushed the shit down in there or whatever after they were done doing whatever. So the shit went in the drain. But then when the water would go into the drain, the shit would float up and clog the drain inside the holes though. It would just float back up from the water in the pipe to where it would clog the shower. You feel me? And some other inmate had to clean that shit up. So that inmate decided, you know, to address the shit. You feel me? And then that's to the boy though. Not knowing the boy's going to go run and tell Bobo. And then Bobo, sure enough, went over there and did what he had to do about it. You know what I'm saying? And this is the type of shit that you see every day in prison. You feel me? Like it's, you got, you know, you got people in there that, that, that are not straight. That'll tell you their name is sexy or kiwi or strawberry. You feel me? Like you'll hear people yelling across the door, hey, sexy. Hey, let me get, let me borrow a pen real quick. Hey, Kiwi, check me out. Hey, Kiwi, let me get, like, man, what do you look like? Me, I'll never call no other man the name Sexy or Kiwi or Strawberry or fucking none of that. You know what I'm saying? I just wouldn't speak to no booger, no boy. Avoid him to the fullest. That's it. That's just your best bet. You know, just avoid him to the fullest. That's your, that's, that's my motto. That's how it is with me. Hey, you got a pen I can borrow? Ain't nothing. That's that. That'd be my answer. Straight up. Hey, man, you, uh, you, can I borrow a spoon real quick? Ain't nothing. That's that simple. You just avoid them. You feel me? Because your association can make you look some type of way. You get what I'm saying? Like me, I'll never get put in a cell with one. Like it ain't nothing. I ain't going in there, Sarge. And handcuffs and all. Or if they try to put one in my cell, I'm not cuffing up. Let you put them in here. I ain't cuffing up. Oh, you're going to get a DR for refusing a bunkie. It is what it is, Sarge. I'm already back here in the box. I don't rock like that. You feel me? That's that's how it is. You feel me? You got to make sure you 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 stand on what the hell, you know, let people know, oh, it ain't nothing with me. You feel me? Because the one thing I learned in Florida State Prison is it doesn't blow your mind on who does mess with boys. It blows your mind on who actually don't because you see it so much to where you want to put it past it. You want it, I, I want to doubt it. You know, you see it so much. And then, like I said, every camp you go to, there is vicious bandits, okay? You have ones that go in the shower when people are in the shower, and they'll up on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turn around, you know what time it is. You know, it's like, like they'll pull knives out on them and try to take something from them and try to force them into something, you know what I'm saying? Some dorms you could be in ain't, ain't with that shit. A whole dorm will jump on a bandit and jump them. Beat his ass and get him up out of there. Make him check in, you know. But then, you know, at the same time, in prison, you're supposed to mind your business. That's the one of the main things you're supposed to do. Mind your business. So you got people that ain't gonna say shit. They're gonna see if you can hold your own. It could be a homeboy you talk to and hung out with every single day. Next thing you know, a bandit run down on you in the shower because you, you, you don't, he wait till you put the soap over your face and shit. Now he got you. Now he got you with a knife. Now he come in with a knife. You feel me? And one of your friends that you've been cool with or whatever might not say shit. Might act like he don't see it. Not, you know, that's how it is in prison. It doesn't matter if you know 70 people. When it comes down to a situation, you're going to be standing alone. You feel me? So, them bandits are everywhere. You get what I'm saying? And some of them are more vicious than the others. Some, like, try to take it by force. Some will try to, you know, get you to be all buddy-buddy. You know, they act like... They'll help you. They'll, they'll start giving people shit. They'll be like, oh, yeah, man, don't worry about it. You know, they'll buy things from the canteen window. They'll go to the canteen window, buy some shit, and then hand it over to the, you know, the, the person they want to talk to. And be like, here, man, because I see you ain't hit the canteen window in a minute. Like, they'll act like they're their friend. You get what I'm saying? You just got to be strong up here to see that. Don't accept shit from no one. Just like when you go to prison, they show you that little vi video about the honey bun on your bed. You know, that's real. 
But since they showed that to everyone, people were not using the honey bun tactic no more. Someone could literally just come up to you and be sitting there talking or whatever and shit like that. And he could just hear your conversation about anything. It could be about the law library or you want you like to read books or, or it could be anything. Next thing you know, dude goes to the library. When he comes back into the dorm, he's got a book or whatever. And he'll wait a couple days and he'll be like, hey, bro, you like to read? And he'll be like, yeah. And they'll be like, oh, look, I got these books if you want to check them out. Just like that because he heard you talk about the books you like to read. You know, like it's they, it's it's a finesse. They get their way in there. They'll try to win you over real nice, buddy, buddy. You won't even think nothing of it. You'll just think he's cool. Next thing you know, you can go to him when you want to vent about your problems. He'll come to you when he vents about his problems. And next thing you know, you think they're buddy, buddy. And then, boom. And bandits going to put their foot down on you and tell you, look, this is what it is now. You're going you're gonna to realize he's really overprotective. And that's what they do. He'll see you in the school building or hear you in the school building talking to someone. He gonna go press him. Oh, what's up with his, uh, I heard you was, uh, talking to such and such in the school building. You feel me? He'll go, he'll go straight to the dude you, that, the, that boy was talking to. You feel me? Say, say that, say the dude was talking to someone named, uh, I don't know, CeeLo. He'll go straight to CeeLo's dorm. Be waiting there for him in his room. CeeLo kind of, oh, oh, what's up, boy, what's happening? Shit, just chilling. Hey, uh, what's up with you and, um, such and such? Who? Such and such, man. Um, uh, peoples, you feel me? You know my peoples, right? And they call them their peoples when really that's their boy. And then he'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. Nah, I was just, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure it was, you feel me, nothing bigger than that. You know? Oh, no, nah, no, nah, but boy, it ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, you're not, yeah, you all good. You good, bro. Just, you feel me? That's that's how they act in there, bro. They get real, very overprotective over another person that is supposed to be a man, but they're boys. You get what I'm saying? So, you know... If you ever go to prison, knock on wood, you know, just make sure you carry yourself the right way. Don't fall for anything that someone will tell you. Don't, don't let no one lure you in. Remember, you don't have no friends. You have associates, okay? There's a big difference between friends and associates, okay? No one is your friend, all right? If you go to confinement and you have a locker full of canteen, nine times out of ten, your friends ain't going to send you that canteen. To them, that's money. And same thing when it comes to a jack, when it comes to anything. You feel me? You, you It's ne never, nothing is ever guaranteed. You could be out there hanging out and be cool with one person and then 20 people fuck with you. Once you go to confinement, you know, they, they that one main person you were fucking with, do you dirty, the other 20 are going to fall back and allow it. That's what it is. You feel me? But beware of these bandits, all right? Because they are in there, you know, they do have different, you know, they got signs up at every camp you go to. It says PREA, Prevent Rape Elimination Act, with numbers. If a call here if you've been a victim of PREA. Those are everywhere you go. Every phone you go to get on, there's those signs. Like inside the damn uh, chow hall, inside the damn medical building, everywhere you go, you're going to see those signs because it does happen. And like I said, Bobo was the most vicious one that I've ever seen. That I've ever seen in the Florida State uh, Department of Corrections was Bobo. Two life sentences, done been down over 20 years now, you know. And he was known to either, you know. I heard that at his camps before that, he would he was on that taking shit. He would, he would come in, you know. But then he found another approach. He tried to buddy people. And next thing you know, they can't get out of it. He's got them to where they hooked. To where... Not hooked to where they might like them like that, but to where there ain't nowhere you can go. I'm God to you in here. I'm who you have in here. Like, like shit like that. That's the type of shit that they deal with and that you go through in prison. You feel me? So I just want to come on here and share that story with y'all about the most vicious bandit I ever seen in Florida prison. Don't mean he's the viciousest one, but I'm talking about the most vicious one that I remember seeing. You feel me? There's a bunch of other ones. You feel me? But Bobo... Was just known for it. Like he. It, like to where gang members feared him. To where officers knew what time it was with him. And it was just. It was just a rap. Like they knew. You know like. That's Bobo. You feel me? But anyways man. I appreciate y'all watching this video. You already know this K-Frog. 
Like I said, y'all can catch me on the K-Frog Gaming. I'll be on there almost every other day, streaming, hanging out, trying to really boost the gaming channel up. Because in the future, gaming is going to be the shit that holds the top position of a lot of things. So many different celebrities are making gaming channels right now. It's unreal. Like, it, it's, it's just crazy how the gaming channel. And then, to be real with y'all, the gaming channel is something I like doing. I like doing the gaming. I have fun while I'm doing it. When I come on here and I do these videos on YouTube, I don't like doing these videos, but I do do these videos for the people who are watching. You get what I'm saying? I want people to know what prison's really like, all right? I do this for the subscribers. You get what I'm saying? The gaming channel is more of an approach for me. I do it for me. I'm doing something I like to do. You get what I'm saying? So if y'all ever want to check it out, it's K-Frog Gaming. You put a space in between K-Frog and Gaming, though, so it's K-Frog Space Gaming, and then uh, y'all can catch me there. You feel me? But anyways, appreciate y'all watching. Till next time, it's Frog.